Hello! Welcome to another Southern New Hampshire University's Learning Center tutorial on how to use MuniTab Express. In this video, we'll strictly be talking about how to run a two-proportion Z test. If you haven't already, you're going to need to install MuniTab Express on your computer. If you need help with doing so, there's a tutorial within this series um, on YouTube where you can watch how to install using the Southern New Hampshire University's Blackboard website, or you can also just get Minitab Express through the Minitab website uh, itself. So once you have that installed, um, open up Minitab and you should be looking at something similar to what I'm looking at here. So in order to run a two proportion Z test, you'll need to select the statistics tab at the top of your screen. Below you'll then select two samples and you'll select proportions for two proportions. In this case a pop-up will pop up and you'll need to select or enter in information that's uh, relevant to your question. Uh, so if you have actual data you'll need to enter the data into the columns below so you can put them into col one, column one. You can put it all into one column or you can put sample one in column one and sample two column two or whatever you prefer. Uh, you just need to make sure you tell it that's what you're doing. So if both samples are in one column, you'll select this drop-down option. If they are in their own column, you'll select that, and you'll just um, select it. So like, let's say I had numbers here, and we were doing proportions. Uh, now you would just select C1. Oops, sorry. Each sample is its own column. Uh, you hit C1 for sample 1, C2 for sample 2, and now it knows where your samples are. If you actually don't have data... Uh, oops, it's freaking out at me because I don't have proper data in, uh, inputted here. Um, but anyway, so if you don't have the actual data and you have the summarized data, you'd select this. And this would be if your question told you just um, the number of events and the number of trials. So if sample one, there was like three people that did something out of the 10 you asked. And sample two, there was like eight people that did something out of the 15 that you asked. Uh, you would just enter that in here. Um, if you need anything additional other than just the information from the test, you can hit options, uh, and that will let you choose uh, if you're doing a difference of not equal to zero, less than zero, uh, greater than zero, because basically what's happening is it's going to be taking your first proportion and subtracting away the second proportion. So if you just want to see if there's a difference in proportions, you would select the not equal to. If you're looking to see if the difference is less than zero, or that means you're getting a negative difference, uh, the only way that could happen is if your sample two proportion is larger. Because if you were doing a smaller sample proportion minus a larger one, your difference would be negative or less than zero. But anyway, I'm straying away from the concepts here. I'm more getting into the math, and these videos are strictly in order to help you figure out how to use Minitab Express. So once you've figured out which option you would select here, you would do so. And then you would put in a confidence level here uh, in case you wanted a confidence level or anything like that. So once you've entered in all the information that you need, you hit OK, and it will output everything you need. So it'll tell you... Um, the p-values for the samples, it'll tell you the hypothesis for the or the null hypothesis and the alternative, and then it gives you the p-value here. And I had select the box plot option or the confidence interval difference here, and it, it outputted that for me. So basically, at this point, you would take your p-value and then you would uh, compare it to your alpha and figure out whether you would re reject or not. But basically, this is the premise of how you would do a two-proportion z-test. Uh, once you have this information, you would continue out with the last few steps of your hypothesis test, uh, and you'd be able to finish your problem for there. So hopefully this video helped, and uh, please check out all the other videos that will be in this series if you need help with any other mini-tab tutorials. So yes, like I said, hopefully this video helped.